I spent 50 hours testing nearly every map and quest in the game to bring you not only the best leveling methods, but also amazing alternatives for the launch of Reboot 2. Disclaimer, this guide is made with fresh accounts and new players in mind. If you're a veteran player or you have more damage from Lynx and Legion, just simply move to these areas earlier than recommended. Some tips before we start. If you are ever confused about where a mob is located, simply open the map, go to the search bar, type its name, and then click on said character. The maps containing the character will then light up. The Star Force system is where a large part of your damage and survivability is going to come from at MapleStory. As you can see here, my shoe has 10 stars and this shoe has zero, and you can notice the range increase from it. To Star Force your gear, you just press the red hammer right here in your inventory. You go ahead and drag the selected piece of gear over to the box, and then you just press enhance and pray you get lucky. In the early game especially, make sure you have your gear start as high as possible, up to 10 stars. This will make sure you have enough damage to actually be able to level smoothly. Hyper teleport rocks are borderline necessary to be able to move around a maple story. They allow you to click on places on the map like so and be able to teleport to them. If you are playing in Reboot, you can buy these hyper teleport rocks in the cash shop for Miso. They are located under the game section in Convenience. I'd recommend buying the one week one as it's most efficient. The maple guide has a great source of rewards as you level. As you can see here, I claim the level 30 one and this will provide you with the budding sprout title. Now this title gives you 30 star force and 10% EXP on any character that uses it. It is also transferable to any character inside of that world, so you should just claim this on whatever character ends up hitting level 30 first and you can move it around your account as needed. Keep in mind this title expires after 90 days. Let's talk sources of additional EXP. The budding sprout title that we mentioned from the maple guide is a great starting point, but other places include potions from Monster Park. You're going to be running this place daily, so it is definitely worth it to spend the coins to buy these extreme gold potions. They give you an extra 10% EXP for 30 minutes. MVPs. You will see people announce that they are using an MVP in certain maps at a certain time. If you are in the map when the MVP is used, you'll obtain a 50% EXP buff that lasts for 30 minutes. The most common place that this occurs is Mushroom Shine, which is typically indicated by saying MS. You can get there easily from the Maple Guide. Link skills in Legion also provide you with EXP buff. These sources are Mercedes Link skill, Evan's Link skill, Aron's Link skill, and Zero's Legion card. These are two pretty complicated systems, so we're not going to go in depth about them here. Just know that you get them by leveling up said characters. If you have done your housing prequest, then the housekeeper in your house also has a daily EXP buff. Mine currently sucks because I never do housing. Starting off with levels 1 through 30. Many classes, especially newer classes and explorers, will have a quest line they have to go through at these levels. If the quest line is mandatory, just follow it until you're free to move around. For everyone else, Flaming Golems in Golem Temple 3 and Water Thief monsters in Edelstein Strolling Path 3 are the best maps below level 20. Once you hit level 20, or if you're unable to find one of these maps, utilize one of the following maps until level 30. Cold Eyes in Where the Sky Smiles. Flame in Scrap Iron Waste in Savage Terminal Waste Treatment Plant 2 and 3. Any of these four maps containing Sewer Rats in Monk Temple. Sand Armor and Sand Helm in Desert Cavern 1 and 3 respectively and Street Lamps and Patrol Robots in Street Light Row and Road to Mine 1 respectively, located in Edelstein. If you want to be a little bit extra spicy, once you're level 25 or so, you can peek into nearby maps that are slightly above level 30 for a chance to get a rune or a portal for faster grinding. Some good maps for this are Safety First in Road to the Mine 2, Newton Nutrias in Nutria Gutter 2, and Dumpy Hoodlums in Shaded Dump Site. From level 30 to 60, it's time for us to do Theme Dungeons. Team Dungeons are by far the best EXP and can save you out on Star Forcing until you get through them, saving you some extra time. Start out with Rihanna Strait so you can get some good accessories that you can Star Force. Then personally, I do Fairy Academy, then Gold Beach, then Elodin in that order, depending on how much EXP I still need. The quests here are all very straightforward, so you don't really need a guide for them. My only recommendation is make sure you make usage of your Return to Town Scrolls and your Hyper Teleport Rocks to save time. From level 60 to 70, the level 30 Team Dungeons are still the best EXP if you're playing on a pressure count. I gain more EXP from the theme dungeons than I do one-shotting level 85 mobs with a rune on. For those who really don't want a theme dungeon at this point or have a many EXP boosters, the best map here is Stairway to the Sky 1 in Orbis. This map is generally extremely crowded, so Garden of Red 2, Garden of Darkness 2, and Cloud Park 2 and 3 all serve as great alternatives that give pretty similar EXP. Levels 70 to 75 will be heading to Guard Robot L's located in Shaft 4 and Edelstein. This map is great, especially if your mobbing is mediocre. But there are actually two even better, less populated maps if your class is good mobbing. If Androids in Android Research Labs 1 and 2 actually provided me with more EXP than Shaft 4. If these are all busy, other great alternatives at this level include Guard Robots in Shaft Entrance 1, Raccoonies in Raccoon Nest, and White Fangs in Ice Valley 1 or 2. From level 75 to 85, if you're on your main, I would recommend doing Afterlands. Not only will it provide you with better EXP on a pressure count, 
but you'll avoid the crowd and obtain 31 attack and 20 main stat worth of gear. Personally, I'm going to be doing this on my main when Reboot 2 launches. Make sure you are using a guide when you're doing this, otherwise what would normally take 40 minutes will end up taking 4 hours. I'll put a link in the description below. If from 75 to 85 you've chosen the grinding route instead, Megatia has you covered. The best map in this area is Iron Mutes in Lab Area B3. This map has an abnormal spawn and an amazing flat map layout. Great alternatives include Scorpions in Sahel 2, Dark Sand Dwarves in Desert of Serenity, Mithril Mutes in Lab Area B1, and Rurumos in Lab Unit 103. If you're really desperate, you can head over to Dark Sand Dwarves in Desert of Dreams as well. All of these maps are very similar though, just look for an open one. Once you hit 80, you can try out the higher level maps here. Authorized personnel only is available to you via a hidden map. To get there, you must enter this portal inside of Lab Area C2. Good luck getting a map here though, because this place is going to be insanely busy. If you can't find a map at Authorized Personnel Only, Lab Area C3 and Lab Area C2 are both good alternatives that offer slightly more EXP than the maps we were just previously grinding at. But the difference is so minimal that if you can't find one of these maps, just stay at the previous maps mentioned. At level 85, it's time for us to move to Leaf Ray. The best non-Star Force map is Entrance to Sky Nest, but the EXP rates in every single one of these maps is so similar that I recommend you just look for a 100% burning map. Oh, except for this map. This map sucks. The rest of this run will involve Star Force maps, so let me explain how they work. Star Force mobs have a different EXP to HP ratio than normal mobs do, which makes it beneficial to train in these maps. Here's an EXP parse I got from an amazing map spawn 15 levels higher than me that was not Star Forced. Compare this to a parse of a Star Force map that is the same level as me, and the EXP gain is not even close. Star Force maps are gated by the amount of stars you have on your gear. The more stars you have, the more damage you will deal up to a cap. These Star Force maps are so broken that they will generally be better than non-Star Force maps even if the Star Force maps are at 0% burning. Star Force maps are much tankier than their counterparts in non-Star Force maps, so we generally want to be within 10 levels of the monster instead of 15 like we were before. From levels 95 to 110, you're going to be looking for any Star Force map you can get in Leaf Ray. The best map is Blood Harps in Sky Nest 2 or 3 if you're able to get one of them. The rest of the Star Force maps inside of Leaf Ray are all comparable in EXP, so just go to whichever one you can find high burning in, especially if Skynest does not have burning. Now that we're 110, it's time for us to do Zakum. I would suggest not grabbing a rune before doing Zakum, as you're going to end up overcapping on EXP, as well as wasting a massive amount of that time that you have the rune for looking for a map in Ludibrium later. To get to Zakum, you can open up the Maple Guide, go to Boss Contents, scroll all the way down, and press on Normal Zakum. Just simply talk to Adobus, enter the map, drop the Eye of Fire, and slay Zakum. If you end up getting one of his accessory drops, go ahead and start that up. After beating Zakum, it's time to move to Ludibrium until level 125. Thanatos and Gatekeeper have the best map layouts and spawn here. If you can get a high burning map here, stick to them. Both of these maps are cleared in a circular fashion, utilizing the portals in the bot left of each corner to move around said map more easily. If you do not have access to a high burning Thanatos or Gatekeeper map, dual Ghost Pirates are the next best thing. To access this map, use the portal at the top right of Warped Path of Time 3, and you will arrive at your destination. On par with dual Ghost Pirates are Master Death Teddies, located on the exact opposite side of Ludibrium. Use the portal in the middle right of Forgotten Path of Time 3, and you'll arrive at that destination as well. These alternative maps follow a pattern of clearing each platform from top to bottom, using the portal located at the bottom and move back up to the top, and then repeating the process. If neither of these maps have high burning, then you can try out Spirit Vikings in Warp Path of Time 4, Ghost Pirates in Warp Path of Time 3, or Deep Buffoons located in Warp Path of Time 2. Once we have 125, I recommend doing Monster Park, especially if you're on a new account. Make sure after you run Monster Park, you use the coins to buy an EXP potion as this will help you on the rest of your journey. Different days of the week give different rewards in Monster Park, so check what rewards you have for that day. Sunday specifically is extremely beneficial to run every single Monster Park run. You can get more runs, up to 7, if you buy tickets in the cash shop. On Sunday specifically, I would recommend maxing this out for the beneficial EXP. At 125, it's time to head over to Korean Folk Town and do the wanted poster quests. These quests get finished extremely quickly, and they also give amazing EXP. To do these quests, just go to one of the highlighted maps, or you can look on your map and look for maps that have the wanted sign on them, and just kill a few mobs. I would recommend skipping the one in the Blinds map in Goblin Ridge, as this one is mad annoying. For grinding at level 125, it's time to move to Banes and Cerberuses in Tr Cave of Trials located in El Nath. My personal preference is Cave 2 over Cave 1 over Cave 3 for this map. If you'll take any of them you can get with High Burning. If none of these are available with High Burning, 
The second rate maps mentioned in Ludiprium with high burning will give you more EXP than this will. If none of these have high burning, then you can try Minor Zombies and Dead Mine 4. If you still can't find a map, the rest of the Dead Mine maps are all on par with each other. From 130 to 140, if you have a high burning Banes or Cerberus map, go ahead and stay there. If not, you can try out Dark Wyverns and Black Wyverns Nest over in Leaf Ray. These give slightly more EXP than Zombies and are likely to be high burning because I've never seen anyone try actually train here. If you cannot find either of these at high burning, you can just continue doing Zombies in the order stated prior. From levels 140 to 145, I recommend the Temple of Time prequests. These give EXP better than training at Banes and Cerberuses without insane EXP multipliers, and you don't have to deal with the crowd. On top of this, you'll get your Pink Bean prequests out of the way, all while being at the perfect level for the best map in the game. Temple of Time prequests can be started in your light bulb under Temple of Time. Just follow the series of quests here and make sure to save drops from the field bosses and the masks from the monks for later quests. If you want to not do the quest lines, you can continue with the maps listed in the 130 to 140 set. Now that you've hit 145, you're pretty much going to be stuck in Kerning Tower until 170. That is, if you're lucky enough to find a map. Spessos are by far the best map here. The map layout is extremely nice, the mobs are way too dense, and it is too easy to cleave every single one of them. If Espressos are filled, which they likely will be, dressers are the next best thing. If dressers are filled, Thieved Perm Machine, Grape Jelly Juice, and Red Headphones are also good alternatives. None of these are available, just look for any map here with high burning. Now, if there is no map here with high burning, which is actually a likely scenario, Skeligons and Leaf Ray are actually comparable EXP to the third rate maps in Kerning. The Dragon Nest left behind too is the best Skeligon map, just try to look for one with high burning. If you still cannot find a high burning map, then you can try the other two Skeligon maps located in Leaf Ray. Once you hit level 155, if you are having issues finding a good burning map in Kerning, consider Oblivion Guardians and Detour to Oblivion 3. This map is only just barely worse than the mediocre Kerning maps, so if it has high burning, this is a great alternative. If Kerning is still super packed and none of the maps over there have burning, you can consider any of the other Star Force maps inside of Temple of Time. They all give pretty similar EXP to each other, so just look for one with high burning in it. Hitting level 160 opens up Future Henesis, which gives us access to the Empress questline and level 170 Star Force map. For grinding, Espressos are still the best map, but official Night Bees and Second Drill Hall are on par with Dressers and Kerning Tower. There's a portal in the bottom left of this map that will make your rotation much easier. If all three of these maps are gone, you can try out official Night A's and First Drill Hall. The portal for First Drill Hall exists in the bottom middle of the map. Now if all of these maps are taken, then you can go ahead and try Armory 1 and 2, located in future Erev. But these maps have a pretty bad spawn rate. If Special Machines and Dresser maps have their burning drain, the Empress questline will provide you with much better EXP, and you can utilize Star Force maps while doing the quest to get even more EXP. To start the Empress questline, just go to your light bulb, start the quest labeled Knight Stronghold. Once you hit level 170, you should do the NLC quest located in your light bulb until you get to the quest that asks you to kill the boomers. Once you kill the boomers, you can then turn in the coin you receive from turning in this quest to Spindle, for a much needed ring that you should enhance. This isn't for the EXP, this is mainly for the damage because you're going to be using this ring for such a long time. Once done with that, the Critias questline is by far the best EXP, beating out even Espressos at this point. The quests give you very dense, good EXP mobs to kill, and the quest completions themselves give an insane amount of EXP while being extremely fast. From this point on, you may be having difficulties obtaining the necessary Star Force to do high Star Force maps as a new player, so I'm going to start providing non-Star Force alternatives. For grinding from 170 to 180, we're going to be moving to Omega Sector. Great Commuter Saucers in Corridor H01 is the best map available, but Corridor H02 and 3 are comparable if your class can handle the bad map layout. If not, Corrupted Advanced Magicians and Corrupted Magic Forest 3, located in Critias, can provide an alternative, especially if you are lacking Star Force. Once you hit 175, and if Omega Sector is packed or low burning, Detective Raves gives a good amount of EXP, about 3 levels in 30 minutes. You can start the quest from your light bulb, but be prepared for many, many cutscenes. Also remember that you have to actually answer some of the questions, so you can't just hold down the interact key while going through the quest. Hitting level 180 unlocks Twilight Perion, and with it, some amazing maps. But I recommend doing the Twilight Perion questline here because it is not only amazing fast EXP, but you can avoid the inevitably low burning maps as well. At this point in the game, your damage will start to fall off, so being able to do this questline and gain a little bit more EXP to be closer to the mobs and level will make you just level that much faster. Simply obtain the quest label Twilight Perion in your light bulb and be on your merry way. For grinding, we get access to two new Star Force maps. Swollen Stumps and Desolate North Rocky Road is certainly the go-to. Amazing map layout and mob density makes for extremely fast EXP gain. I expect this map to be pretty much impossible to find. Pillaging Wild Boars and Dusty Wind Cannon give Pillaging Boars and Dusty Wind Canyon give good EXP as well, despite the poor map layout. Because of the damage requirements at this stage, the non-Star Force maps actually start to become competitive as well. Non-Star Force alternatives include Sinister Rocky Mast at Foreign Excavation Site 2. Pillaging Fireboars in Gale Plateau, and Swollen Stumps in Deserted Southern Ridge. A quick side note for these levels, 
The Ancient Dark Golems and Excavation Intermission Area should technically be the best EXP pre-200, but I wasn't really able to clear these in a reasonable time on my Battle Mage, and I don't think any other fresh account will be able to either. If you somehow have the damage to actually clear these, this should be the best EXP. At 185, we unlock Fox Valley. These quests give amazing EXP while also taking you through some absolutely amazing maps, so I'd highly recommend doing that, especially if the burning is drained on the more meta map. Once again, it's as simple as clicking through the quests on your light bulb and following the arrow. Unlocking Fox Valley also gives us access to some amazing non star force map palm puff bush in fox tree top path three flutter buzz in fox tree top path and nettled squirrel in fox tree lower path two are all competitive with the best non star force maps in twilight perion so i suggest looking for one of these with high burning as well at 190 you will unlock scrapyard located in edelstein this will give you access to maps that are equal in terms of exp to the non star force maps in twilight perion and fox valley so if all those maps have their burning trade go ahead and move here the best maps here in Scrapyard are Chase Roid Blues in Scrapyard 5, Modded Broken Androids in Scrapyard Hill 2, and Modded Scared Roids in Scrapyard Hill 1. At any point, once you hit level 197 as a burning character, or level 199 as a non-burning character, make sure to do your Haven quest located in your light bulb for a free level up. And then congrats on hitting 200 and getting your fifth job. If you want to see how I'm going to be utilizing these leveling methods live, you can go ahead and check out my Twitch channel. I'll be streaming 24 hours on the day of Reboot 2 launch. And if you want more guides, let me know down in the comment sections below.